Welcome to EuroPCR 2024. I am Flavio Ribichini from the Cardiology Division in Verona, Italy. And uh, I'm going to share the next minutes with a friend and colleague, Professor James Pratt from St. George Hospital in London. Nice to and be here, Flavio. Pleased to see you. We are going to talk about the European Consensus document dedicated to the treatment of calcified lesions, released last year in the European Heart Union by a group of experts. And I want to know your opinion, James, about the potential effect that this document might have on our community when dealing with these difficult kind of patients. Yeah, I think that's a good question, Flavio, because what we know now is calcium is common. You know, it was common before, but we kind of ignored it because there wasn't much we could do about it. So actually bringing this to the forefront of our discussion is really important because we know that PCI fails because stents fail and stents fail because we don't prepare plaque. And which is the plaque that's most hardest to prepare? It's calcium. So a critical document, and actually this is a really good opportunity to bring awareness to our community. Mm -hmm. Is the paper providing useful practical advices for those who are starting their experience on these difficult lesions? Yeah, I think so, because I think the first step is awareness, Flavio. If you're not aware that calcium can be a problem in your procedures, you're not going to look for it and you're not going to treat for it. And we know that, unfortunately, the penetrance of imaging is still quite low, about 20%. And coronary angiography is a significant discordance between seeing calcium and not seeing calcium. So we can miss calcium that's there and can harm our patients and harm our procedures. So if we're not looking for it, we won't find it. Okay. You are raising an important point. I mean, angiography is absolutely not reliable when assessing the severity mm. of uh, the calcified lesions. And so we clearly specify in the document that ideally you should guide your intervention by intravascular imaging, mm. either, either IVUS or OCT. But we are well aware that uh, the penetration, as you said, is not as high as we would like. There are countries with limited resources. There are operators that are a little bit, let's say, unfavorable to waste time or mm. they pretend to know without the need of intravascular intervention, the, the benefits of that. So we did took much care of that, and mm -hmm. we gave advices on how to drive your procedure by intravascular observation with either IVUS or OCT. But in cases you don't mm -hmm. have access, we mm -hmm. gave also advices on how to guide your procedure on angiography. What, what's your opinion on that? It, yeah, I think there's free information in the angiogram that we're not really being aware of. We, you can see very obvious cases where you've got concentric calcium, you get this dog boning effect in the middle, and I think that's difficult to miss. I think what people do miss is eccentric calcium, where you get wire bias to one side of the vessel and no plaque modification. And that's free information, Flavio. We have to be aware of that eccentric calcium. If we just keep getting the balloon bigger and bigger, it can lead to bad outcomes such as vessel perforation. So I think there's free information in the angiogram. We know angiography has improved, not to, perhaps to the same way that imaging has, but there's information in there which we can use to keep our procedures safe. James, you are making the point. I mean, you are talking about concentric, eccentric, nodular. Uh, this awareness came in the last years because of the intravascular observations. And now we have uh, different devices for the most appropriate management mm. of this variations. Yeah. Do you think what we have is enough? We need more or we need more data to say this is a good indication for that device? Yeah, it's a good question. But if you look at where we've come in the last five years, where we pretty much just had balloons and ablative technologies, mm -hmm. and now we've got lithotripsy, it's a big jump. But I think bigger than the technology jump is our understanding jump. That morphology really matters when it comes to calcium. That it does matter if you've got nodular calcium. That it does matter if you've got eccentric calcium because this was just hidden information before. We couldn't see it. So I think the, the technology has risen to the challenge in that I think most of the time eccentric calcium is pretty well treated by lithotripsy. We're starting to understand how wire bias can afflict uh, ablative technologies, particularly for reducing the volume of nodules and so on. And ironically, concentric calcium, which we used to think of as the biggest challenge, it's probably the easiest challenge to treat now. Mm -hmm. So you say we have identified different targets. We have dedicated different devices. The next question is, do we have enough knowledge and culture to make the proper diagnosis, 
and the proper training for each kind of devices, especially in those who are approaching our, our job of interventions? I think that's the key question, Flavio. As you say, the technology is ahead of the education and we've mm -hmm. got to close that gap. Because there's no point having all these technologies if we can't utilize them for the benefit of our patients. So I think there's a big role for societies, for industry, for physicians to kind of realize the importance of education and for that education to be as clear as possible. Because at the moment there's a lot of information out there. We have to make sure that information orientates to achieve behavioral change for the benefit of, yeah. of patients. That, that's very important indeed, the, the, the group of experts uh, consider that very important. This is the last paragraph of the paper, talking about the need for training. Because, as you said, with the aging of the population, with the complexity of intervention, calcium is everywhere, it's, ca it's kind of pandemics and in interventions, but you need to train. Last question, in your center, High Volume Center, London, uh, are you all guys dedicated to emergencies? Trained to deal with an acute MI, ST elevation in off hours working, to deal with appropriate lesion preparation in a calcified lesion? Yeah, and I think that's a good question. And, and our centre is a good example of what can change because even as far as five years ago, we had very little imaging penetration. Now, as a centre, we do more than 60% intravascular imaging across specialties, you know, low volume, high volume. And we're very aware of the need for plaque preparation because plaque preparation determines stent outcomes, which determines patient level outcomes. And actually, I think one of the things that's narrowed that gap is education because it's framed the problem very well for people. And it's also explained that the solution perhaps isn't as complex as we might have thought. So and I think the, that cohesion we have within St. George's has actually been really heartening to see, and I think that's translated to better patient outcomes. Yeah, that, that's a clear example of the synergy that we need in between education, industries, practice, and what we are doing now, which is promotion of, of an issue, which is really an issue. Exactly. So, I thank you very much for that, James. Pleasure. And uh, just summarize that this document is providing practical information. If there is one message that we wanted to underline is to avoid direct stenting when you see calcium in a vessel. If you have the opportunity of assessing the quality of the vessel and the, the, the type of plaque with intravascular imaging, this is better. If you cannot, we are providing precise tips and tricks to do the best you can without intravascular imaging. And last but not least, what you said, James, the importance of training our next generation interventions because they will have to deal more and more with old people, complex lesions and calcified patients. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Flavio.